Hey, how's it going? My name is Brian Cooper. I'm one half of Cooper and O'Hara Photo and Video. Today I'm gonna to be doing a technical breakdown showing you guys how Thomas and I created this photo. Or is it a video? Well, here's the thing. This is an interesting breakdown today. We're gonna to talk a little bit about the technical of what it took to make this thing, which is called a litograph. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the lighting that went into it and a little bit about the, the fun story of lighting things on fire as usual. Uh, so let's start the breakdown. So here's a little behind the scenes. This shows how we shot things uh, over in the studio set here, uh, which we have like a custom painted wall that was just nice for some dark, very subtle texture. And we have the concrete table, the same one that I'm sitting at here as well. Uh, later on, we did some other shots on this uh, light blue seamless and in the treatment of it in post. Uh, you can see that we toned it a little bit and overall, Jay was awesome to work with. We know Jay through doing a music video with him. We knew we wanted to do something cool uh, and that he could really give a lot to the camera. In comes the lightograph. This is something that's really recent that came uh, out of Jeremy Cowart's work. We followed Jeremy for a long time, even back when we were in school. And uh, like throughout our career, uh, when we see something that's inspiring and interesting that some other photographer is doing, we like to approach it from a reverse engineering aspect. You know, so Now it's a lot easier to find behind the scenes material showing specifically how somebody did something or you know what we're making for all of you watching at home right now. But I still think there's something interesting in trying to figure out your own way of doing it. So I know Jeremy is selling a course where he shows you how to make this. Uh, so feel free to check that out and support him. Uh, we weren't interested in necessarily putting money towards that and we're really big fans of this book, Steal Like an Artist uh, by Austin Kleon. And the sort of premise within this book as well is that, you know, you take something that you see, um, maybe paying homage to it, but you're also filtering it through all the other things that you've quote unquote stealed, <laughs> quote unquote stole through your career. All the things that uh, cumulatively make you and your artist style you. So with that same impression, we wanted to figure out a technical way. We knew right from the get-go, he obviously is shooting these photos super rapid. And the other thing is we knew that he shot with different flashes than us. I think he uses Pro Photo and we have these Godox lights. So we're kind of at the whim of whatever technical thing that we have um, and, and the limitations within that. Looking a little bit into these lights, we discovered that there is a a mode um, that's been around for a long time and it's a very niche specific technical mode that exists where essentially you can uh, fire off one flash followed by a completely different flash and the purpose of this was to create a complete white background and a silhouette and then you use that as a mask in Photoshop or even in film. Um, days as well. Taking that premise, you can make whatever groups of flashes you want. Now, the limitation being, okay, can we only use two? Obviously, he's creating more than two. The thing is, we have a, two different kinds of Godox flashes. We have these little ones, which we love and we travel around with, and we're also borrowing some of these ones, these bigger 8600s. So, the 8600 allows you to do three different groups of flashes that can go off. You know, this one will be first, then a second, then a third. These ones have just one and two, or you can keep it on for the whole time as well. So, trying to do a little bit of math <laughs> in the sense of like, how do we create as many combinations as possible? We were able to use uh, upwards of, um, you know, three or four of these and two of these where we needed to be able to get multiple combinations. The setup process is pretty simple with the 8600. You're going to turn it on, obviously, and then you're going to hit the menu button. Now, if you go down to the area called Alt, you'll see that you can have, it's already set to off. 
Now off just means that it's going to flash every single time. Now depending on what you set in the one above, which is the units menu, uh, you'll have one, two, three, or maybe four. Then if we go over to the Godox 8200, you get to this custom function menu by holding down the test button. Now once you do that, you scroll over to F5 and you'll see it should be already on off and then you can scroll it to N1 or N2, again being first or second firing. For us, we played with this. Uh, the funny thing is sometimes you'll find, depending on when you turn the flash on, even if it says N1 and the other one is N2, they might flash at the same time. So that's one thing you kind of have to play with to see what sequence it's actually firing in. All right, so it looks like there's a ton of things going on. Uh, basically, he's surrounded by lights, and that is the hard thing with this technique. You do have to have a bunch of extra flashes, and things start to get a little bit uh, cluttered and full very quickly. But just to show you, you know, as the simplest way possible, here's a top down. There's J, and this is the background. And then we have our little table here with our vinyl that's on fire. Next, we have a background light here that is a small octa, and it actually has a red gel um, close to the bulb wrapping around it so that it creates that soft red light that you can see in one of the photos. This one next is kind of hidden but there's a small little reflector dish light and it's mostly spotlighting the background to create a little bit of color cast. It's also bouncing onto him and it's a little bit of a harder light so you can see that. And like I mentioned, this one has just a clip and it's a blue square gel there. So we'll just call that blue light. And then we have our key lights going and we have them in opposite spots to again, create the most uh, contrast. This is an Okta, I believe, over here. And then we have a umbrella. And so to try to figure out, I think, you know, there's, there's one where there's n color, which must be like one, and then one where there's no color in one of the key lights. So this must be one of the, our other bigger flashes to be a three. Um, and then I would guess that this is like a two and maybe this is a three or you might have set it to a four because you can go up to four. And then by flashing through multiple times, we took more photos even than the six that we used. There's a couple overlap or like weird ones where this one and this one would go off and it didn't look good. Um, so basically just rattling through and you get the maximum amount of combinations and permutations uh, to, to go back to, you know, math, grade 11 math or something like that. But <laughs> it's definitely something that I would suggest you pre-lighting for. It's not something that's super easy to figure out on the fly. You kind of have to tweak it and fiddle around with it. Like I said, even when you're first setting up a flash, you might have this set to one and this set to two, but they end up going off at the same time. You might have to like turn them off, reset them, stuff like that. I didn't forget, I also promised a quick funny story about lighting things on fire. So I wanted to mention how we actually lit the record um, because the record itself won't, you know, light on fire. Um, I thought maybe vinyl would be flammable, but apparently it's not on its own. And so we had to put some lighter fluid on it. The first thing we tried was this gel that I had, you know, from a campfire uh, in my backyard. And it's basically this um, almost like clear flame. And then it turns really blue and bright. Um, and it just didn't show up on the camera at all. It was funny, like the the record was basically melting and warping and going crazy. It was even dripping a little bit of fire like on the ground when I was holding it, uh, but it wouldn't show up on camera at all. So we got a Zippo lighter because we wanted to have him holding it in a couple shots. Thankfully, the Zippo fluid that came with it is something that made that, you know, orange flame that shows up very easily. So it uh, it was, you know, safe-ish to, to basically pour a little bit. It would stay in a contained area very easily. Um, there was a little bit of flare up. I think I lost a little bit of hair off of one of my knuckles um, just because we wanted to get the flame to be lasting longer and longer. 
um, but we had him at, at least at a safe enough distance that he felt comfortable and wasn't worried about the flame at all. <laughs> so that's how we uh, we managed to do the burning record, which honestly I think is such a great idea Thomas had that really um, made a unique spin on this lightograph. You know, Jeremy's done some other interesting ones with frames and, and different things going on with, with color and costuming and stuff like that. Um, but this is the first one I've seen with fire, so there you go. Would you ever have a face tattoo? Thanks so much for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe picked up a thing or two or the, at least the urge to explore and experiment yourself. Uh, let us know if you do have any questions about anything that you saw in this video or otherwise in the comments. We love hearing from you guys. And if you have anything else that you'd like to learn from past photos that we've shared, please let us know. We'd love to do more video around that as well. We hope you enjoyed this technical breakdown. Thanks and take care.